This story comes from AD&D 2nd edition. Specifically the uh, re-released black books is what we were playing with. Uh, I was dungeon mastering, because of course I was, <clears throat> and we had a party of an elven ranger, a human cleric, and a human fighter named Tydra. And this story is mostly about Tydra. Now, the party had gotten involved in a, a war between dwarven clans deep within the Undermountain, where, um, I wish I could remember the specifics of it, but this was more than 15 years ago. Uh, they, were, they were fighting over something, and one of the dwarven clans was essentially evil because they're being manipulated by their evil dwarven warlord or whatever the hell I made them. I don't remember exactly what. Anyway, they had gotten caught up in the middle of this war, and they finally got to the point where both uh, armies of each side had like finally met, ready to start this battle, and the party was literally stuck in the middle. Before I go on about that, let me tell you a little bit more about Tydra. Tydra was played by my friend Josh, who uh, you probably you might actually have seen him uh, if you watch the D&D uh, &D, uh, gameplay videos I have over my gameplay channel. He's one of the players there. Um, I have a lot of stories about Josh. He's a he's an entertaining player to say the least. Now the character of Tydra was a was a human fighter, and he had a strength score of I want to say. 18 over 91? Somewhere. It's, I was on the high end for sure. And to to give some context, if you don't know Dungeons and Dragons at all, uh, for the most part your ability scores is uh, gauge 3 through 18. And back then, average was 9 through 12. Like a standard human was like 9 through 12. We had 0 pluses, zero negatives to whatever rolls, like that was it. So having something that's 18 was really, really high. And Advanced Dungeons and Dragons did a thing where if you had 18 strength, it was further segmented into how good you were. Because if you just had 18 strength, that was, I want to say, that was plus two to hit and plus three damage. But if you're a fighter class, you got to roll 1d100 on top of that, which is why you have the 18 over whatever number score. And they made it so that if you had an 18 of over 1 through 75, you had plus 3 to hit, plus 3 damage. Uh, 76 through 89, maybe? It was plus 3 to hit, plus 4 damage. Uh, 90 to 99, plus 3 to hit, plus 5 damage. And if you have 18 over 100, it's plus 3 to hit, plus 6 damage. Which, oh, probably more than that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's plus 6. It was a lot. Either way. So... Having an 18, a strength score of 18 is a lot, and then the percentile dial, percentage uh, die on top of that makes it even more ridiculous. So way back in the day, having a strength score of past that was ludicrous, literally monstrous. Like only monstrous uh, races would have a strength score of 19 or higher. And Tydra had a strength score of 18 over 91. So it was definitely on the high end. And he's the kind of guy who wasn't the best armored and held a two-handed great sword and he was quick to anger quick to violence and any opportunity where he got to use that great sword he would do it think think guts from berserk like if you can imagine that that's who tiger is anyway so the party is caught in the middle of these two warring factions and no matter what they do, there's nothing they can do at this point. Like, they're going to go to war, they're going to fight, and people are going to get killed. Um, and they were helping defend one of the, the they're helping defend one of the Dwarven clans where that where bad stuff was happening to them. So the evil Dwarven clans coming on up uh, and they were ready to just wreck everything they had. They showed up with siege weapons to destroy this Dwarven, this Dwarven clan's stronghold. Uh, specifically, they showed up with ballistas. And the ballistas they had, they, they weren't like your standard uh, on top of uh, on top of a rook or a front of a ship ballista, which is like a huge mounted uh, crossbow or whatever. 
in in this this campaign or my campaign or adventures or whatever, ballistas were these huge fucking rolling uh, anti tower like shooting logs uh, kind of siege weapons. Basically, think of the ballistas from Warcraft 2 or Warcraft 3, and that's what they were. In fact, I'm pretty sure I stole, I got the idea for this and stole it from Warcraft 2. Like, those massive kind of ballistas. So then, you know, these ballistas roll up, they're, uh, Doran Clan's here, party's in the center, and they're like, oh crap, what are we supposed to do? Uh, and the way I had it set up was that the party would need to get off of the battlefield and basically kind of go around through a stronghold or the fort or whatever it was and kind of make their way around the warring armies and flank the uh, possessed dwarven clan, get to their leader and take him out. Like they take him out, the war, the charm spell, whatever would stop and everything, everyone would get, regain their senses. So to do this, to get them through off the battlefield and get over to it, as soon as like they realize they're caught in that middle, and the dwarven army shows up with their seed weapons, they fire. <laughs> Massive ballista shot just launched, and it's right at the party. And they had enough time to see this coming at them, and they would know to, you know, get out of the way. Unfortunately, I forgot that Tydro is being played by Josh. And he made, he always makes very specific decisions when something like that happens. <clears throat> so I tell my players, you hear a large twang as a ballista fires and a huge ballista shot just is coming right at you. And I was like, you guys got time to get out of the way though. Josh looks at me and he says, I catch it. What? I'm gonna catch the ballista shot. That was the stupidest thing I've ever heard. At the time, from him, at least. Like, a, a ballista shot would, it would kill him. It would, like, go through the torso, and then it would, like, cartoon physics, leave his limbs there, he would look down, and then his body would fall apart, just super dead. This dude says, I'm gonna catch it. What I forgot was that he had something on him to help him do this. Josh says, I'm gonna catch it. I'm gonna drink my potion of giant strength and catch it. At some point, I've forgotten exactly when, he had received a potion of giant strength. Like I said, his strength score was very, very high. The potion of giant strength was specifically a potion of fire giant strength. That would give him a strength score of 22 for like, I forgot how long it was back then. Maybe an hour? Might not have been that long, I don't remember. Long enough. A strength score of 22 is ludicrous. At that point, it's like plus 10 damage with any like swing you do. And I, I don't remember how much to hit, plus four, five, maybe six. Ridiculous amounts. So Josh, you know, hulks up, got huge fire giant muscles. He's, he sees the ballista coming and goes, I'm gonna catch it. Glug. Ha. And I just look at him and I say, I'm gonna roll 1d20. If I roll 20, you catch it. God damn it. I rolled a 20. Incoming ballista, Tydra, arms at the ready, grabs onto it and like it slides them back like 15, 20 feet, like Dragon Ball Z style. I was like, all right, fine. You caught it. Are you happy? Can we move on? No, that wasn't the end. Because now Tydra hulked up, it roided up pretty much, has his ballista, and he's like, I'm gonna throw the ballista shot, ballista shot over my shoulder and then run to the Dwarven army with it. And I'm like, what? What? So now this crazy roided up human fighter dude, he's got this massive ballista shot and he's holding onto it like a bat. And he just charges at the Dwarven army, just Aah! And then the chaos ensues. Like at that point, like it's just on. Like both armies start going at each other. The other two party members like are like, Aah! and they just struggle to try to keep up with Tydra. And then he get, finally gets up to the army. And then rather than going all the way around through this really cool fortress and encounters and stuff that had all this planned, 
Nope, right through the middle. They're just gonna plow their way right through all of the enemy dwarves and get to their leader. So Tydra, wielding this massive ballista, just runs through them, just starts swinging it. Just grr, grr, like a massive ballista bat. And, and sure enough, just cuts his way through them. Just, grr, there goes three dwarves. Grr, there goes 15 more dwarves. Grr, and just opens, like, Moses' a path through these dwarves for the rest of the party to get in. And he's just swinging wildly. And these are dwarves too, so to him it was like swatting away a bunch of fat middle schoolers. Just <laughs> Cuts through the army and the other dwarves are like, I'm not dealing with that, I'm gonna go fight the people my size. So they're off back, back there and they're fighting. And they finally get to the, uh, like the big enemy captain dwarf or whatever he was. And I figured, you know, he'll all right, he'll swat him with the, the the ballista bat and have a good time. No, not at that point. He gets up to the captain, <clears throat> and you know, he get, he takes out his two axes and they're ready to throw down or whatever it was. And Tydra, with his ballista bat, throws it at him. And I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe this. I was like, all right, make your roll. And sure enough, he just throws his massive ballista back at the dwarf. And I think he said something clever at the time. He's like, you dropped this or whoop some, like this was yours. He, something to that effect. It was very funny. Throws it, he rolls, and he's got like massive bonuses because of his strength modifier being 22. And of course he hits it, but I don't want to just let him instantly murder this big encounter that I had planned. So I like... So he gets hit by it and I just say like the dwarf gets like trapped underneath or something. So like this huge enemy that has been built up for so long just gets comically trapped underneath this blister. Just burr, burr, he can't get it off. And then, you know, then he pulls out his great sword. The Elven Ranger shows up and the cleric gets his mace and he's ready to bash on them. And at that point, he's already messed up by a ballista. He's stuck underneath. It takes him a while to even get underneath while they're just wailing on him and sure enough with not a whole lot of resistance they killed that dwarf stopped the fight saved the armies and made peace to the dwarven kingdoms all because Tydra drank a fire giant strength potion and got a ballista bath